All right, so before that, you know, I just want to make sure where everybody can run Rabbit now. Um, so if you are still running technical issues, uh, please let me know. Uh, but we have to start the Rabbit today. So anybody who is still running, and uh, anybody who is still running this uh, Rabbit issue, hopefully no. Okay, some of you asked it about the version. Uh, yeah, so uh, for this for this course, I told you guys to uh, install Revit 2020, but you install Revit 2021, that's still okay. Uh, the problem is uh, Revit, you know, like a newer version can open uh, the Revit files from the old version, but not the, the vice versa. So if you are running, for example, Revit 2020, and uh, sorry, if you, are, if you build a model with a Revit 2021, you cannot open it with Revit 2020. You get a point. So if you are working with, uh, like if you if you work with a team member, and if uh, your team member is using a lower version, that might create some logistics problem. But other than that, 2020, 2021, 2019, they are exactly the same thing. It doesn't make so much difference. I actually want to show this interesting thing. Uh, in in ju uh, June this year, 2020. 25, uh, let me see here, 25 biggest architecture company in UK actually send the open lighter to Autodesk. And they basically criticize that Autodesk, you know, is making a lot of profit <laughs> selling. So what's that? Yeah, so Autodesk is making a lot of profit by selling uh, these uh, Revit products, but they never made any change. They basically say, you know, the technology, let me show you the word they are saying, they say here, 20 old Revit. So basically 20 year old Revit. So basically Revit was developed in uh, 2000 and sold to Autodesk in 2002. But since then, I believe Autodesk only made minor changes to the user interface, but all the others like a code engine, the functions, pretty much all the interface stayed the same as 20 years ago. Uh, but they made one uh, restriction. That's what I said, you know, the old version Revit cannot open your version file. So what do we happen? You know, if I'm an owner and I'm using Revit 2021, and if you are the designer, engineering company or a general contractor, you must purchase the new version. Got the point? So that's how Revit is making profit, unfortunately. All right, so now let's learn Revit. This will be the thing we are building uh, together. This is not, once again, this is not your first assignment. This is just a model for practice. And you will not be required to turn in this model. Once again, this is in-class exercise, all right? Uh, so this is a three-story building. Let me just, uh, now I turn on the rendering. Uh, so you know it looks a little bit photorealistic, but let me turn it off. Just go to the regular realistic one and also turn off the sand pass. Now this is how the building looks like. Uh, so we have uh, this uh, four levels, the, it's actually three level building. So this level is the foundation level. So we're gonna build some foundation here. Uh, it not, it's not showing here, but we will build the uh, isolated uh, footings uh, um, and also the caps for that. So this is the lower level, zero one lower level. And this is the- But you, we cannot see the screen. Oh, I'm so sorry. I said I shared the screen. Uh, Mm. I'm able to see it actually. Oh, you can see the screen? Maybe you can see. Yeah, I, can yes, see. I, I can see it. Can see. Oh, I think I'm sharing the screen. So you can, can you see the screen now? Yes. I, I don't know, it's not showing. Oh, okay, yeah, yes, it, I got it. Okay, okay, nice. So this is actually uh, the weird setup. You know, this is the second level, but this level is actually entry level. You see this? We actually have to slope the entries pass and you go this way and this is actually the main entries. And we have the stairs, you know, going from the lower level to the entry level. And this is the roof level. And this is the weird uh, single slope roof. I uh, just have the slope in this one direction, not the regular roof. And we're also go going to build some uh, handrails uh, and also of course put the furniture, uh, the ceiling, suspended ceiling, some light fixture, uh, and also the floors. That's, that's what I'm gonna build together. Uh, and after this, this is architecture. After this, we're also going to build a structure. So we will build a, uh, the, uh, the concrete columns, the, the beams, and also the reinforcement inside. So we're gonna build the rebars inside. So that will be the next 
chapter. All right, so now please open your rabbit. I'm gonna close this and it's just start over. So uh, imagine we're actually on the same page. Now just close search rabbit and open your rabbit now. By the way, uh, I'm gonna use this tutorial. So if you go to your US Canvas system, uh, you will be able to see this uh, week one lab tutorial, Revit Architecture A, B, you know, they are pretty much the same thing. You just open this one and just open this, uh, click the link, it will open this uh, PDF file. So this will be, uh, you know, the tutorial we are, we are using. I'm actually having the tutorial opening on my other screen. I, I would recommend you to also have it open. All right, so let's open Revit. So this is Revit, this is uh, 2020, how 2020 looks like. Uh, 2021 will pretty much the, be the same. Now let's create a new product. So just click this new and make sure you are using this architecture template. So Revit is using different template files to organize the, the drawings. You can imagine that's how it organizes the drawings. So if you are using, for example, the mechanical template, then it will show uh, mechanical drawings, electrical drawings and plumbing drawings. That's not what we need. So we want to use the architecture drawing because that's our first step. And then make sure you are creating project, not the project template. The product template will be something kind of like, a, I'm also creating a drawing side that can be reused by others. No, we are gonna create a project and use this architectural template and click okay. All right, just give it a second. Now you have this. So let me introduce the using the face of Revit. Here is called the Revit Ribbon. So you basically will see uh, the tabs. The tab will include all the main components. Uh, components. Remember I said, uh, Revit is kind of like playing the game Minecraft. And this is basically a backpack with all the tools and materials you can use. So we have architecture, structure, steel, systems, that's pretty much mechanical, MEP system. And we also have other functions like insert, like you can insert a CAD drawing, a PDF drawing to it, uh, annotate. So that's basically how we can plot all the, you know, engineering uh, annotator and the markups. Analyze, uh, we also studied that. So Revit can also perform fundamental uh, load analysis. My C and the site, that's how we create the sites. And of course you can plant trees uh, and we have other like add-ins and assemble. Okay, so let's go back here. That's a, this is also important uh, uh, window called a properties window. So when you have any object here, you select that object, then this window will show the information of that object. And of course, if you go edit tab, you can also go uh, to see more information about that particular object, like a concrete wall, and also change whatever you want. For example, the finish of that. And this is the window called the product broader window. Now you can imagine this is actually the drawing side. Since we use the architectural uh, template, we have the floor plans, ceiling plans, elevations. Make sense? And of course, you can create the sheets. You know, it's kind of like once you finish the design, you want to print out some professional drawings. You want to create the sheets of the breakdown of the materials. Uh, that is actually uh, how, uh, what, do you, what do you do? And it also schedules quantities. Okay, we will talk about that uh, uh, again. So, uh, we will be, the first thing we want to do is to save it, okay? So, uh, before uh, we forget it. So, let's just click save it. And now it will ask you to save it somewhere. Don't uh, save it to, okay, since you guys are using your personal computer, it's not a, pr a big problem. Uh, previously, when we use uh, the computer lab, a lot of students just saved the file on the desktop and they didn't save it to the flash drive. And when they uh, reboot the computer, their models just will be gone. So just uh, make sure you save it to some place. Like I'm using my personal computer. I'm just going to name it as Revit Demo. All right. Another weird thing about Revit is uh, once you save it, like for example, this is my uh, desktop. Uh, after a while, maybe after five, 10 minutes, uh, you will see a whole lot of a Revit demo, demo one, Revit demo two, Revit demo three. Those are working process files, okay? That's how Revit documents your working process. So if you uh, finish your design today and you want to 
a story of file, uh, you know, flash file, which file should I save? The one without numbers, guys. Because if you save the files with numbers, that is actually your working process. Make sense, guys? Okay. Now, the first thing we want to do is to pull out the level lines. Um, so let's go to elevation plan. Let's use the source. Now, this is actually the elevation plan. It gives you by default the levels. So we want to uh, plot the level lines as the first step is, it is easier for us to define, uh, you know, the head of the walls. So let's do this and let's uh, plot the two new level lines. So just go here, the datum, you see this one? And then click this one and use your mouse. Now you see, basically see the, see the head. It's okay, just randomly put some VR. We will change the head later. So just uh, click one time and then move your mouse somewhere and here, if you land up with them, you will see the dash line. So it's very easy. So let's do this level three and also do this uh, level four. So create the four levels, all right? Another way to create the level line is, so I'm going to just delete this one, um, okay? Another way to do it is select this one. Okay, let me go to architecture uh, level. Another way to do it is uh, see this peak. So what we use to is called the drawing line, but we can also use the peak line. So if I go to this peak, and if, if I know the head or the, the level difference between level three and level four, let's say that's 10 feet. So I basically change the offset to 10 feet and move my mouse here, see the, see the dash line appear, right? And then if I click this one, now it will basically give me a level line. It's actually very- Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Professor, how do you put like the levels? Sorry, what's that? Hello. What What was the question? Oh, how do you put like the levels like like that that lines? Oh, okay. So just go to architecture, and if you see, and go to this elevation. Let's say use the source elevation, and go to architecture. Now here you see grid and level line. Okay, so I have to put like grid. No, no, level, just level. Grades, that's top-down view. Level, that's elevation view. We are doing the elevation view now. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, so anybody, everybody's good here? So I'm not just doing the demo, guys. I also want you to follow me. So this is a step-by-step. -step. So if you follow me, we can, we can work, work it all together. All right? So now... We want to change the names Hello. of so go. anybody? Somebody had a question, right? Okay, so now we want to change the name. Uh, uh, so let's change the level level one to level. Let me let me see what is what is the name of that. Okay, let's change it to zero zero foundation. You basically just double click there and say zero zero foundation. It asks you, would you like to rename the corresponding views? Click yes. See what happened here? The floor plans and the ceiling plans, the name of level one has been changed to zero, zero foundation, okay? And also we know the elevation is not correct. It shouldn't be zero because we have this weird design. So let's change this to negative 14. Don't have anything. If you don't have anything, by default, it's feet. So now it actually moves to negative 14, zero, zero foundation. Okay, so this one is zero, zero foundation, negative 14. And then let's change this one to zero, one, lower level. Click yes, so see, this one is uh, the floor plan changed to zero, one, lower level. And let's change the um, altitude to negative 10, All right? And the level three, let's change it to zero, two, entry level. Click yes, and change the head to zero. So that'll be our entry level at zero. And finally, let's change this level to zero three roof level. Zero three roof. Yes, and then change this uh, head to 10. Okay, so if you are doing it correctly, this is how it looks like. I'm going to enlarge this. You can use your, uh, um, the, the central uh, scroll to, to enlarge, to zoom in and zoom out. 
That's how it works, okay? And if you want to move it, guys, if you want to move the graph, hold it, price it, and hold it, and move your mouse like this. So you do need a mouse to, to use uh, Rabbit, okay? The central bar will be very helpful, okay? You can scroll it to uh, zoom in, zoom out. If you press and hold it, you can basically move the drawing very easily. Alternatively, you can use this uh, uh, navigation bar. Uh, we will be talking about that later. Let me know. Um, let me know if you guys get this step down, okay? You, you, can, you can just uh, use thumbs up or just unmute yourself. Let me know if you uh, get this step down or if you have any uh, problems with this step. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Is this the tutorial that yeah. you had posted yes. in Canvas? Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's step one. What do, we, what do we have done? Just step one. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So I had started it before class, and oh, um, we'll get we'll get to a point where I have more questions. So I was just letting you know. Oh, okay, sounds good. Anybody else can I move forward? If I can move forward, thumbs up, please. Okay, just one person. <laughs> Another thing I'll be do I'll be doing is. Uh, after each class, I'm going to share my work in progress file uh, on the US uh, Canvas. So if you couldn't catch up in the class, at least starting from next class will be um, on the same page. So can I move forward, guys? I'm going to move forward, OK? OK. OK, good. OK, so now let's go to floor plan. We're going to create the first ever wall in Revit. OK, here. That's my experience. About 50% of students previously went to ceiling plan. No, don't go to ceiling plan. What is the difference between floor plan and ceiling plan? The ceiling is basically, let's say, zero 01 ceiling is actually the bottom of a zero 02 uh, floor. Make sense? So Revit basically differentiates the ceiling and the floors. And when we create a wall, where we go? We go to floor plan. When we create a ceiling, such as the suspended ceiling, we go to a ceiling plan. When we create a light fixture, where do we go? Can anybody tell me? Ceiling? Yes, correct. So let's go to floor plan. Let's go to zero, zero foundation. All right. So now it's empty. It's okay. So we're going to plot the, the, uh, the wall here. Zero, zero foundation. Now let's go to uh, architecture and go to wall. Um, and go architecture wall and let's select this uh and here let's select this uh let me check retaining 12 inch concrete wall that's the retaining wall we are doing so let's find you guys see this okay so let's select this one but don't rush to plot the wall we need to make several change we want to define the head of the wall so this one is uh, changing to head and to not unconstrained, but two all the way to zero to entry level. You know what I'm doing, right? So we're gonna plot a wall from the zero zero foundation to the zero entry level. That's why we want to define the level lines first because it will be easier for us. And then we want to use the wall center line. You know, you are plotting one line here, but the computer knows this is the center line of the wall. This is a 12 inch wall. And offset of zero, we want to use the chain. The chain means you can create a continuous wall. Other values, if you uncheck this one, that you can only create one line, that's one separate wall. So we just want to check the chain. And then let's do the wall here. Let me see. Let's go from here and uh, go 40. One way is you can just uh, drag your mouse and see it's 40. But the other way, very convenient is move your hands away from the mouse and use the keyboard to type in 40. Okay, so now I'm not touching my mouse, but type in 40 and enter it will basically give you 40 automatically. Okay, so we want to plot 40 here and I want to go up and plot 22. How do I do? I basically move my hands from my mouse and just uh, use my keyboard 22. 
enter. So that's 22. But now I want to go back and to 40. And if I see dashed line, see this dashed line, that means it's 40. Down. So once it's down, click the uh, exit button. This button. Now, twice, and we are good. So now basically move away from, from my uh, mouse. So click the exit button twice. All right, so that's our first ever walk. Uh, how about let's take a look at it. We want to see the 3D view, go to the view tab, this view tab, and you see this small home button, click it. That's our 3D view. Okay, how to rotate this? This is 3D model, how do I rotate it? So hold and press this uh, central button while you're pressing the shift button, this button. Okay, hold and the price and the shift button, and then you can rotate your wall. And of course, you can zoom in, you can move it. All right. Ah. Question? Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, you hear me? Yes, I hear you, but I just want to figure out how do I. Let, let me do, uh, mute myself. What about now? Yes, please. Okay, so I don't know if this is happening to everybody, but uh, it's very difficult to follow you, like follow your, your instruction while doing the things on the Revit uh, app on the software, because, you know, I have like only one laptop, so. Yeah, same of, here. I was gonna ask if we can just pay attention and then just follow the tutorial. Yeah, it's kind of like, tough to follow your instructions and do the same thing on on, on the Revit. Yeah, I would agree. You know oh, I, I see your point. So you guys are just having one screen and you have to use the screen to run. Yeah, I, I will have to, I don't know, put my laptop on, on my TV or something, I don't know. Okay, so um, I will try to slow down for now but I guess for our first class, let's let's do this. And uh, we are recording everything. So if you if you think you missed some steps, uh, I will try to be as slow as possible. And if you believe you missed some steps, uh, you can always go back to review the review the, the recordings. But I guess we have to we have to use two screens, right? One is uh, yeah, one is for Revit and one is for the. Uh, and also I uploaded this uh, the tutorial. So if you want to, if you think it's uh, more e efficient for you to work on the tutorial, but if you have a question uh, to talk to me, that's also working, okay? Professor, can you just go over how to do the wall again real quick? Okay, how about this guys? I'm just going to show you again how I did the wall, okay? So I'm gonna delete all the wall and show that again. So I'm just going to select all the wall and remove them. All right, so I assume everybody should have the level the line, right? So, okay, I'm going to the zero zero foundation floor, floor plan. I'm going to architecture and I just click this wall. So once I click this wall, I see in the properties window, it changed to the basic wall. And I just use this little triangle to find out the wall I need. So I'm going to find out retaining 12 inch copy wall. So I'm gonna select this one. But before I, I apply the wall, I wanna make sure this is this bar actually defines the property of the wall, okay? So I wanna make sure it's uh, the height is selected and uh, the height is selected to the zero to entry level, which means the wall is from my current level to the zero to entry level. And I wanna make sure the location line of my wall is the wall center line. I want to make sure the chain is checked. Everything else, I just leave it as is. All right. Now I just randomly find a place to start my wall. I just go here, click my mouse, and move my mouse to this direction. And I know that the length of the wall is 40, 40 feet. But instead of a fan trying to move my mouse to find the 40, I basically don't touch my mouse and just uh, press 40, use the number in, on my keyboard, press 40 and enter. So it's 40. 
and don't click any button on your mouse. Just uh, move your mouse to the up direction and use your keyboard to press 22, enter. So that's 22. All right, and then you move your mouse to this direction until you see this dashed line, which means this upper wall is also 40 and click your, the left button of your mouse. Now, in order to escape from this wall plotting uh, status, press this uh, exit button twice. And then you are free. You have the three walls. I'm gonna stop here for a moment. Let me know if you can plot the three walls. Excuse me, Professor. Yeah. Uh, it's a general question. Like, uh, it's better we have uh, two screens, uh, I think. Yeah, I think that would be easier. Or if you have an iPad, or maybe just an iPhone, you know, or a phone, to use it as a, for the Zoom meeting. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Basically, yeah. I have done a uh, uh, few steps uh, before previous. Before okay. The class. Have done so it. that's why I'm able to uh, follow you right now, but. Uh, <laughs> Yes, uh, yes, I think that's a good thing. So if you guys uh, have a tablet or maybe have a second screen, use that, you know, to show the Zoom meeting so you'll know what I'm working on. But you do definitely need a, need a screen to work on your rabbit. Um, or if you can somehow split the view in one screen, on one screen, like a, one side is a rabbit, one side is Zoom. I think that's, that will be also working. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Check. All right, guys. So now this is a, also a, a button we use a lot, the view, the 3D view. So move your mouse to the tab, and there's a there's a tab called the view. Just go there, and and right underneath that there's a button showing like a small home, and it shows a 3D view there. Just go, just click that home button. Now you have the 3D view of the walls you just created. Okay, and also I want to use, uh, I want to introduce this button, you know, this uh, bottom bar, that's also very useful. You know, the first one is kind of like the checkbox, okay? It's kind of like the, uh, the chess, chess. Uh, so this one actually shows the level of details you want to show. Usually we want to use the find. So if you click here and select the find, you know, it will give you more information. And this little cube, we also show different views. You know, it can be very frame view. It can be hidden lines. It can be shaded. Usually I use uh, realistic. So it looks like concrete. So usually I change so the browser. Here, this is, this is a, the, the bar at the bottom. And uh, so if you go to this uh, detail level, I usually change to fine and I go to this uh, visual style, this cube, I usually change it to re realistic. And this is how it looks like. Can you guys follow so far?
Okay, do you guys know how to rotate the model now? You know, if you are using this mouse with a, with a central scroll, scroller, you just hold it, press it, while you press the shift, shift the button or keyboard. That's how I rotate that. Alternatively, you see this cube here, you can basically just drag the cube and just rotate like this. Just use a mouse, drag it like this, okay? Can you just say that one more time? I'm sorry. Uh, sorry, what's that? Uh, the, the, how, how to rotate that, right? Yeah, how to rotate, yeah. Uh, the central bar, the central scroller, your mouse, press and hold it while press and hold the shift button. Got it, thank you. No problem. All right, guys, I'm going to move forward uh, just to catch up on the schedule. But if you are running problems uh, today, uh, please go back, check the recording and also the tutorial. And let's try to finish you know, some fundamentals today. And next week, uh, I, I do recommend you to, to think about using a tablet or a second screen for the Zoom meeting. All right, so next, we're gonna create another wall. Let's go to zero one lower level. So it's still under floor plans. Let's go to zero one lower level. And now you see the wall which is created over there, but we are gonna create a new wall. So this time, now once you are on zero one lower level, let's go to architecture again and click wall again. Now we're gonna create a different wall, not a retaining wall. We wanna create a foundation wall. So just use the, click this little triangle and find foundation wall 12 inch, this one. Foundation 12 inch concrete, all right? And this time we want to use depths. See, Revit is very smart. Since you select foundation wall, it knows usually you want to define the depths of the wall. So you select a depths. And we are on zero one lower level. We want this foundation wall to be going from zero one lower, lower level to zero zero foundation. Okay, so now I define the depths to zero zero foundation. Vol, uh, location line is the vol center line and the chain is checked. Now I want to go here. So since this is center line, I want to basically move my mouse to the center of this, this part of wall. You see this dashed line, it means I'm in this actually uh, on the center line. So I'm going to click it one time, my mouse, and move to this, this, this way. And I use my keyboard to tap six prime six. That's actually six feet, six feet, six inch. Enter. So now I have this, this part of wall. Now I want to go up and uh, I want to uh, use my keyboard, press five, enter. So this now I have this wall and I want to go this direction, use my keyboard, 10 prime six. So that's 10 feet, six inch, enter. All right, so now I have this, uh, this is the dimensions for the three walls. I wanna go up to close the loop. So I wanna keep going up, going up until I see the dashed line like this. Okay, click my mouse and go all the way back to here. Once I connect the two walls, you see it's a little cube. So that uh, the, the square. So that's basically means they are connected. Click. And once again, to exit it, I press my exit button twice. This is how it looks like. So I'm gonna stop here for, for another moment, but I wanna show you the 3D view of it. So I go to view 3D. This is how it looks like. So I just plot this wall first, and then I start from this zero one lower level and the plot, plot it as a foundation wall like this. Can you repeat the dimensions again? Yes, I'm going to show you on the screen. Perfect, thank you. Here. Oops, sorry. Oops. Just a second. You guys can see the screen, right? Yes, we can. Okay, the numbers, all right.
if you're on a tutorial, we have done step two now. So now we are moving to step three, creating terrain. We're going to stop here. All right. All right, guys. Now let's move to the next step. So uh, still under the floor plan. Now let's go to site. We're going to create a site for this project. So let's go to site, double click it. Now we are actually on the side of this one. Uh, so this time we are not creating any structural components, but we are creating the site. So let's use the type mycing and the site. So and, uh, here. Uh, hello. Yeah. Professor. Yes, I can hear you. Is that I'm having problem like putting the foundation. The foundation. The foundation. Oh. Yeah, the foundation concrete. Okay. So, guys, I'm gonna do this uh, one more time. Just, just uh, let me go to the 3D view and delete them. So you are you are talking about these four walls, right? Yeah, like that ones. Yeah, correct. Okay, so I'm gonna just uh, delete them again. So what I did is uh, I went to the lower level, zero one lower level, and then I go to this architecture wall, and I select this foundation twelve inch wall. And make sure you you define the depths to zero zero foundation, okay? Depths to zero zero foundation. Mm -hmm. and then I go from this corner, I move. So I forgot the dimensions. Let me check. Okay. When I, when I did that, it says like the top of the wall is lower, like the of the than the base of the wall. So I think you probably have some issues with the, the previous wall you plotted or you're on the wrong uh, flow plan. So okay. are you on zero one lower level? Yeah. You should be on the zero, flow, flow plan zero one lower level. And oh. What's that? Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so zero one lower level. And if you plot it like this, you know, I, I need to see, I don't know. Um, so some problems can be when you define the level line, if you didn't define the level levels correctly, that can give you a warning. Or you know, the previous three walls, if you create them on the wrong floor plan, that can also give you a warning. But also you want to make sure this is depth to zero, zero foundation. Okay, yeah, I, I got it. You got it? Nice. So now yeah. let's finish this is six prime six and two up to uh, five. And also this to uh, 10, six, and go here, go here. So it's six, six, and then five? Yeah, this is six, six, this is five, and this is 10, six. Okay. So, uh, sorry, Vladimir, I need to move forward. So if you have a, you still have a question, you can, we can talk uh, offline. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. I already figured out. Thank okay, you. that's good. So let's go to site and go to this tab of messing and the site. Okay, so let's go to uh, use this function, this tab called a topo surface. So we're going to define the topo surface for this uh, area. Once again, under the flow plan site and go to messing and the site, topo surface, all right? So now let's select this topper surface. Now we can randomly define, you know, the elevation point on this plot, on this plan. But let's use the right number. So don't touch your mouse. Don't don't touch any buttons on your mouse. But change this number to negative six inch. Negative six inch. And don't press enter. Don't press enter. It's already changed to negative six inch. Now just basically randomly plot some line here like what I did. Okay, so all those dots means they're the negative six inch. Make sense? Okay, now let's change this number, option bar number to negative 10 feet. Negative 10 feet. 
and move your mouse to somewhere in the middle of this building and once again randomly plot some line here. What do I mean? All these dots I just uh, plotted, these were negative six inch, okay? Uh, six feet. And then let's change this number to negative 11 feet. And don't, don't press enter, don't do anything. And then just uh, yeah. and I just randomly plot the, the dots here. Okay, so once everything's done, guys, once everything's done, don't forget to click this check button. Okay, so a lot of times, can you can mute yourself? Okay, so now, uh, don't forget to click the chat button to make sure I'm done with this. I'm okay with this uh, elevations. And then save the product, it asked me to save the product. All right, so let me go to my 3D view, go to view and the 3D view. So this is actually the, the top of surface that's created. You guys now understand the meaning, right? So those dots, I define them as negative uh, six inch, and those dots, I define them as negative 10 uh, feet, and those are negative 11 feet. So I created this kind of slope for my, for my project. All right, make sense, guys? Yes. Actually, in the uh, tutorial, it is said that the contour lines are displayed right after finishing the line, this. Okay. Yes, the contour line, yeah, we, we will be talking about that, yeah. Okay. Yeah, sorry. All right, so now we see the dirt actually goes into the building. So we forgot to build the concrete pad, right? So let's go back to the floor plan site and then let's go to the mice on the site again. There's an option called the building pad. So let me use the building pad. All right, I don't want to use the line this time. I want to just uh, use a rectangle, okay? So select this rectangle and I can zoom in and start from this corner all the way to that corner. And once that is done, don't forget to click this uh, finish, confirm. All right, so once that is done, let's go back to the 3D view. Now this is how it looks like. So we have this uh, concrete pad. So just to go over that last step, you did architecture uh, so and made a wall. Sorry, what? Go ahead, Professor. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, so, did you have a question about the concrete pad? Yes, I did. Okay, so let's go. To, he... It's not mm -hmm. a architecture. It's actually uh, on the side. I go to the mycene and the side, and it's called a concrete pad here, building pad here. Mycene and the side and building pad here. Okay. All right, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. All right, so now the, another uh, function that uh, people always use uh, is this camera. So let's just go, uh, I, I, I'm not sure if you want to use the site. Let's go to zero zero foundation level, flow plan, zero zero foundation level, and uh, go to the view, okay, go to the view. Now this time, don't click this little house, but click the lower, lower part of that. That will give you more option. So don't click the upper part, but lower part of that. And you see this camera? Okay, select this camera. So now it's kind of like you are standing on this zero zero foundation level here and the take a picture to here. So this one actually shows the depth of the view. So if you take a picture here, you wouldn't see anything. But if you take a picture like this, you will basically see the picture of your building, all right? And you can often change the scope of view by drag the, 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 uh, the square, all right? So it doesn't look like a real realistic view because we also need to change it to the fine and realistic view. Now you get the sense, right? This, this camera is actually take a picture from whichever, whichever flow plan level you selected and take a picture and save it as a picture. And once you create this one, you see this one. So uh, in this uh, product broader, you actually added some view here. 
So it's kind of like you're adding a new uh, drawing material. So whatever you're creating, it will be saved and you can always find them in this uh, project browser. Like if you saved some walkthrough video, if you save a 3D perspective view, then they will, you can find them here. If you create any kind of a schedules or, or sheets, uh, you can always find them here. So this is the step three. So now we are done uh, step one through step three. Any question, any issues now? Okay, guys, so let's finish uh, step four and five quickly and take a break. And during the break, so let's have a relatively long break, let's say, uh, let's say 20, 20 minute break. So during the break, if you have any problem with Rabbit, I will be here to answer, okay? So now let's do this so step four and five. You see step four, adding exterior wall. So now we have this, uh, uh, foundation wall and retaining wall. The retaining wall is basically to stop the dirt to go in, you know, this is kind of like a re retain the, the dirt here. So now let's go uh, build the exterior wall from this level and to up. So let's go to floor plan zero two entry level. Floor plan zero two entry level. Okay, the, now we are having this problem. We don't see anything, right? Uh, is anybody having the same problem that I cannot see what's going on that the, the wall is we created. Yes. yes exactly. yeah. so, now this is actually a very common issue. You see now in this property window, there's something called a uh, visibility and the graphics. Not here, sorry. Let me go here. View range. So if you scroll down, okay, on this uh, zero to entry level, go to your property window and scroll down a little bit. You see this view range, and go to edit. This one basically shows that how deep you can see and how and the upper level you can see, the lower level you can see. So usually we just, uh, we just uh, change everything to unlimited. That will make things easier because we are building a very simple model. Click OK. Now you'll be able to see all the things you created. So this view range will be very useful when you are creating a high res building, a skyscraper. Let's say you are building a design for 100 levels. And when you're doing the 100th level, you don't want to see everything below that. So that's how you basically shrink the view range to only focus on the things you are designing. Make sense? But so which one, Dr. Dew, will uh, we'll do the unlimited, just the top or just the bottom or everything? Yeah, you can, just everything. I think that's, that's, that will make things easier. You, our, our product is very simple. So it doesn't matter if we show up everything. So later, uh, if you show the top also unlimited. So later, if you are doing a lower level design, you can also see the walls uh, above you. So that will make the design easier. Okay, so now can, can anybody see the, the boss now? We are on zero to entry level and we just yeah. change this view range and we should be able to change everything to unlimited. We should be able to see, you know, the, the, the boss below my current level. All right, so now let's select a wall. This time we're gonna use a six inch wall, not 12 inch wall. So let's go to architectural and go to wall and let's find the generic six inch, this one. All right, now hold it. Let's make some changes. So let's, uh, uh, let me see which, which level we want to go to. Okay, so first we want to go to, we want to define the height and want to go to all the way to the roof level. So which means we are building a wall from this uh, zero, zero to entry level all the way to the roof level. Okay, and now the location line shouldn't be the wall center line should be, let's change it to the core face interior. What do I mean? When we are building a wall that is a thinner than the wall below that, we want it to line up with the lower walls, right? We want it to line up internal or external. We want the interior side to line up or exterior side to line up, guys. Anybody? I think I lost you guys. Anyway, we want the interior side to line up. So that's why I'm plotting the interior side of the wall and I wanna make sure to plot 
to line up with the interior side of my lower wall. Make sense? So if I click here, you see this wall is thinner than my previous wall, but the direction is not correct. Okay, so this is what I do. Just press the space bar one time. See, you press the space bar, you are basically flipping the, the objects. It is actually a very common function in Revit. Let's say the door opening direction, if you don't like it, space bar. The window, space bar. Anything or, or how you basically uh, place the furniture, if you don't like the direction, space bar to rotate that. Same thing here. So let's space bar. Now you know my intent, right? So the, the, the interior side of the face of the center wall is lined up with the interior face of my finished wall. So I want it to go all the way here, here, all the way to this, I think it's to this part of the wall, here. All right, and uh, double exit. And let's check the 3D view. Yes. I'm, go, I'm going to go closer and now you know what I mean. So this center wall should be lined up with this lower wall, but the interior face should be lined up. So that's why I changed the uh, center, uh, the location line into interior finish. So I can better design where I should place my uh, generic wall here. So that's my generic wall. Make sense? Now I want to close the loop. I want to plot the generic wall from here to here. Which flow plan should I go to? Yes, I want to. So this is actually the lower level. Yes, zero one lower level. So let's go to zero one lower level. And once again, go to architecture wall and uh, make sure it's generic wall and head go to which level? Roof level, right? So I want to make sure head change it to roof level and uh, the face should be interior face. Again, everything looks good. So I'm going to here. And if the direction is not good, space bar and do this. Just go all the way to that end. Down and press the exit button twice and then go to view. This is how it looks like. Okay guys, I'm gonna stop here for a moment. Let me know if you have a major, a major questions. Can you repeat how we are able to see the floor plan in level two again? Okay. Let me see if I go to level two, if I don't see anything on level two, I'm going to the property window and I scroll down a little bit. There's a, 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 a property called a view range, view range and I go edit. And I just change the everything to unlimited, which means I can see unlimited up and unlimited down and I click okay. Then you should be able to see any, everything. Dr. Tia, I have uh, selected unlimited in uh, the lower level, but it doesn't show my entry level walls. It, it doesn't show that? No. Here, uh, did you also change this view depth to unlimited? Um, yes. It, is that showing up? No, it's not. Sometimes it's also about a cut plan. You know, maybe you can just uh, change the number, you know, to the number I have, for example, four. Is that showing things? I'm wondering what's the height of the wall that's, I think that that would be the problem. Yeah, that sometimes is about a cut plan. You know, if the head of the wall is not correctly designed and if it's not reaching, you know, the cut plan, you you wouldn't see that, right? Or if it's outside the, the view range, you wouldn't see that. So if you still run problem, let's, uh, let's talk about it offline, okay? Okay, guys, so now we are on step four and let's do the step five and then we'll take a, uh, take a long break. Um, for Q&A, okay? 
So this is how it looks like, 3D view. We just want to add a roof now, okay? So if you want to add a roof, which level we should go to? Roof level, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, let's go to roof level. Uh, once again, we don't see anything. Okay, so what do I do? I go to the view range and just change everything to unlimited to make things easier. All right, so now I see everything. I'm gonna make my roof. So architecture and roof, all right? So this is just basic roof. Uh, of course, we have some other roof, but let's just use the basic roof. Okay, so we have different options. You know, one thing is you can, pl you, know, you can plot the lines to make sure it's a roof, or you can plot a square to make sure it's a roof. Just one thing you need to remember, guys. When you plot floors, roof, ceilings, it must be a closed shape, a closed loop. So you must have a closed loop. So Revit understand you want to plot a plan like a roof or floor, okay? So another thing that we know is a roof usually doesn't just go to the outside boundary of your walls. Usually there's offside overhung, right? The roof, you basically go beyond the wall. So that's why usually we don't use uh, the plot function, but we use this peak line function. So let's just, uh, on this uh, roof, zero, two, zero, 003 roof floor plan, let's use peak line. And let's define the offside to, I don't know, let's say two, two feet, okay? Now let's select the uh, outside of this uh, whatever line, you know, whatever wall, like the lower retaining wall or this uh, generic wall, it's, it, it's okay to me. Now if you move your mouse here, you basically see the dash line, okay? and it's click it, now you have this one, and then go there, click it again, you have this dash line. Go this one, click it, dash the line, dash the line, dash the line, and dash the line. All right, so like I said, it must be a closed loop, but it now it's not a closed loop. So how do we close this one? So this is another very popular function. So you basically just uh, uh, go to the uh, upper rainbow and there's a, something called a trim and extend to corner. Okay, here. Select this one and select line A and line B. Now they will basically close that loop for you. So line A and line B. Now I make sure this is close the loop. I click OK, I check. Now it, it looks like it, something is changing. So let me go to the 3D view. That's basically creates this kind of roof for me. So I'm going to stop here for a moment. Let me know. And also you see, this is the off -hung, over hung I just mentioned, you know, this is why we usually use the peak method. So it's easier for, for creating roof and hand drills. I'm going to stop here for a moment. Let me know if you have a question. About is good. All right. The problem is this is not the kind of roof we want. You know, this roof has too many slopes. Uh, we want that kind of a modern design with just one slope of roof. So it's not what we need. I don't want to delete this one. So how to delete something from Revit? Just go select it. So once you go to the edge, now to go to the center, okay? If you go to the center of this thing, like this, you never select it. But if you go to any line of this object, Revit knows you want to select this object and select it, just use the delete button. Now it's gone. Or alternatively, you can go to the roof level plan. And again, just select any line here like this and delete, now they are gone. Okay, so something's wrong. I don't want that kind of roof. What I do? Okay, I'm going to show you what kind of roof we want to do. So let's go redraw the roof again. Let's go to architecture, roof. And uh, again, I want to use this uh, two feet overhang. All right. Now let me uh, plot the first one from this bottom. So I'm going to select this one. You see this little triangle? That means in this direction, there's a slope. And the slope is this uh, nine over 12. That's actually how we define a slope. But I just want a slope in this direction. So before I create a second line of my roof, I uncheck this one. See this option bar, you know, this bar here? 
I uncheck this define slope. So now it's the I uncheck this one. Now let me create a second line like this. There's no triangle, which means in this direction, there's no slope. And this line too, there's no slope. And this line too, there's no slope. So only in this direction, there's a slope, but all the other three, no slope. How do I close the loop again? I go here, the trim and extend function. And once I select that, I select line A, line B. Now they are closed. Line A, sorry, line B. Now they are closed. Now there should be a closed, closed uh, uh, loop. Click OK. And let's go back to the 3D view. That's actually how my roof look like. It's just one slope. The problem is what? The problem is it's too steep. The slope is not correctly defined. So now this is how the property window plays a role. I just select this roof. And once I select this roof, the property window will show the properties of the roof, okay? And if you go here, there's something called a slope. That's where we want to change. So the, the correct slope should be, let me check, one over 12. So I'm just going here, I change it to one over five and I go apply. All right, so now we have this kind of roof. I'm gonna stop here. So let's take a brief, brief, uh, brief break. Uh, let's say now it's uh, five, seven. Let's return at 5.30. And meanwhile, I'll be here to answer a question.